Greetings! Today, teardown of something mildly interesting and I'm gonna try to do this video a little bit different from before. So let's begin. What we've got here is a CCTV camera um, from Honeywell and I think this is gonna be mildly interesting mainly because of the weight. I mean this thing weighs absolutely a ton and I suspect there might be a Vidicon tube inside. So yeah, let's, um, let's rip it apart and um, see what makes it tick. The camera is, I think, in the working order. The only thing is the, like, the lens um, over here is really badly scratched. Um, but let's, uh, let's begin. So, as I said, it, it's really heavy and uh, it's whole metal construction. This, I suspect this wasn't cheap at all. You've got this massive, uh, massive cover, rain cover, dust cover. Um, you can slide it in and out, I guess, if you can, you can hold it like so, so it protects the joint over here um, when it's outdoors. Power 12 to 12 volts AC, that's interesting, so you can power it up from 12 volts AC or 24 volt 50 hertz AC, so okay, and it will consume 15 watts max. Now I have uh, powered this up. Um, just uh, on bare wires and I've connected it to a random monitor that I had lying around with analog input and it um, does work, sort of, uh, but it draws about an amp so yeah, that would add up to 15 watts but uh, this is an awful lot for a camera nonetheless. So to make it a little bit smaller um, I think I will begin by taking off the, um, the whole mount and I've managed to take those off um, but over here you can see that this has been now well, it's got the overmold over here that's not going to fit through this part and this doesn't come apart anymore like this one uh, split into two this one is one solid metal piece so um, I guess what happens uh, when they assemble this this has to go on the cable first and then um, through this piece and gets connected so let's uh, put those two out of sight and let's have a look at the camera itself, what else uh, we can find. By the way, it's a model HCD uh, 92534X. This camera is a standard definition, um, regular TV screen for uh, 4 to 3 aspect ratio. Uh, we've got a really nice uh, seal with an O-ring access port over here. And what we see is a connector for video test looks level one two one step two step three step and four step little dip switches for switching off this probably switches the you know, leds the infrared stuff on the front uh, depending on how many um what's the lightning level you can switch on when should should that kick in uh, we've got the lead level another thing possibly this is the intensity of the um, leds and we've got uh joystick up down menu menu push down so has this got a menu I really don't want to be completely destructive with this because um, I want to keep this and possibly reuse this for something I'm not sure what yet but uh, if it's working it's a nice piece of kit um, but moving on with uh, with the third down I can see that the front lens or at least a ring is coming off and we've got a whole lens so yeah, this is what uh, was badly scratched, so I guess I could p possibly polish that out if I wanted this uh, to be fully working. And over here we've got the LEDs, how many are there? 24, 24, 24 and 24 on the other side, that makes 48 and 1, 49, an odd number, okay. And we've got a LDR, a light dependent resistor over here. Um, this is what's determining whether, when the infrared LEDs will come on and nice assembly let's have this is interesting so on the bottom you've got uh, there are two flathead screws and if we move them and uh, there is one marked F and one Z so that would be focus and zoom so by moving those you can see the whole lens assembly rotating and moving around This one, the zoom one is not so visible, probably something moving inside. Um, 
so I guess oh this is an o-ring as well so this is a seal it's a really nice camera not really nice assembly okay over here I can see what appears to be a ring that possibly we'd have to turn uh, turn round you can see on the ring there are those dimples over here and those are probably to make it turn but I haven't got something like that so let's see if we can get at the back okay over here there is a tiny set screw on the top and on bottom so maybe let's try that right I've loosened up those screws um, those set screws over here and I would think that this should now unscrew the whole back so try it by hand but it's not letting go so let's oh no this is not coming out so hmm what do I do next I'll try to attack this front bezel I guess and see if that brings me gives me any luck Oh, how lucky I am. It turns out this actually is very loose and it unscrews really nicely. It wasn't tight at all. I was worried that it will be a huge, a hugely tightened thing, but no, it's not. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, not much help. Uh, only this came out and what well, you'd normally expect this to be plastic but this is uh, this is metal not a metalized plastic as in cheap Chinese stuff Wow okay I can see those tabs over here you can see there are tiny flaps like so and those are in the four corners I'm not sure whether those were designed to help pull this out, but I'm going to try and... Yes! Okay. And there we go, the insides are here. So, let's disconnect this. Six wire connection going into this uh, LED ring. And we've got LED minus L, maybe LED level, plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, LED, CDS and ground. CDS, what would that be? And there are two chips on here, what are those? Those are the markings on the chip, I've deciphered those. Um, both chips are the same over here, and the markings are MB11802G and the second line reads KAY383GB so let's have a look what those are unfortunately um, a very quick search on Google didn't find anything on this chip now I'm, I am finding suppliers um, for this from China for MB1102G and it correctly states it's a SOT8 package 8 pin SOT so this chip does exist um, it's must be something obscure uh, it's probably some sort of lead driver constant current driver I think you can see underneath there is a little bit of copper exposed uh, on, on the PCB maybe that's for to help uh, dissipate some heat from it um, but although hold on a minute looking at this are those MOSFETs okay the board is very heavily um, coated with black solder mask so I can barely see the traces but okay um, I've changed my mind uh, I was wrong those are not MOSFETs because there's too many legs being connected there's one two three at least four separate connections going into this okay and I removed four, li four little screws and this is the uh, plate that was on here and now this you can see there we go this comes out all this is is um, a right angle gear that uh, mates with uh, with the lens assembly with a little bushing so it's uh, it spins freely 
and that's all there is to it. So now that's out. There must be some way to remove the rest of this. Okay, I removed all the screws that I can, including those set screws. I've unscrewed them completely, even though it shouldn't be necessary. And um, I still can't uh, can't budge the back of it. Okay, there we go. It turns out there is two more set screws on the sides, which I didn't notice before because they were blended in because the cover um, that clips onto the camera. Uh, it's sliding in this groove and basically it was all covered with gunk. It didn't look like there was anything there But anyways, there we go We are inside and we've got the assembly out Looking at this module this has been slightly over engineered at the very least um, but anyways, so First thing that uh, Came to mind when I looked at this um, you can see those uh, plastic washers and those are on the inside and on the outside. This is how this was attached to this over here. And those insulate the actual cage, the camera workings from the body. So the body is not grounded. It's actually floating. Nothing is connected to the uh, body of the camera. I'm not sure for the reason for that. Um, maybe it's got something to do with the signal and whatnot. I would have thought that uh, grounding the case would be better, but obviously not. Um, now, over here there are three distinct modules. So we've got power supply over here, um, the camera uh, assembly over here, and the top board over here looks like some sort of control and logic and whatnot. So we'll, we'll have a look at uh, what's in those let's uh, let's take this further apart oh look at check the screw out can you see that on the camera will it show but it's um, the screw is not fully screwed in and it's not that someone had a go at this I don't think anyone opened this uh, it was it looks like in the factory someone's put a too large uh, fastener in the in the hole and it doesn't fit properly Okay, I've removed four screws in each corner of the camera board. I think that's the first thing that has to come off and there we go. That comes out. We have well, two cable sets going into this. So let's see if I can unplug those. One of those horrible things that doesn't want to unplug. Ah, there we go. So that's one, and the second one is the blue and black thing. So okay, and that's the camera module out. So let's press on. Oh. How nice! Uh, look, uh, this is uh, this has got a little hinge bin built in, and this is uh, this is meant for serviceability. So once you take the, I guess you could see me trying to poke in with a screwdriver over here, but uh, yeah, I didn't have to. All I had to do is tilt this up, and we can see over here, and the cables are nicely labeled as well on this so we've got um, ground VCC iris PWM trigger VBS ground VBS extra down up setup right left motion iris sig D and in look at this there is more of this insulation going so this shielding can is completely insulated from this board. That's interesting. Um, now, this board here is a power supply, so you can see there's a common mode choke, a couple of cups, a um, small transformer inside. Hope you can see the yellow transformatory tape. Um, there's a fuse in the corner, and this. Um, 
this has got exactly the same top. This is just a normal power supply. The only difference is uh, in a standard switch mode power supply, the most common thing that you see, um, this there will be a high voltage side and low voltage side. It's the same over here, but here the high voltage side is maximum 24 volts, but it's exactly the same thing. And you can even see the separation between primary and secondary. Um, so yeah, this is the transformer here. So this would be the primary side over here and that's the secondary where the output goes or maybe other way around. This is the primary and that's the secondary. Either way, um, you get the idea. So it's a standard switch mode power supply. And there we go, I removed those two screws. I've also unglued this and this is just a piece of, um, I guess a dust cover um, around here. That's just a, um, on a double-sided tape, uh, but now this board will lift out, uh, lift out and come out. And looking at this, what we have, well, there's nothing on the back uh, on, of the round board, so this is clearly just some controls on little standoffs of its own. And that goes onto this board and here we've got a pig. Okay, so there is some pig doing going on. Pig 16F676. Pig 16F676. And the fuse underneath and that's about it. So that pig is doing. Let's have a look if it's this pig is any special. There we go, um, I found a data sheet for it, uh, PIG 16 f 630 or 676 and we've got the 676 variant uh, which I think differs from 630 that it has a 10 bit um, A to D converter with pro programmable 8 channel input and voltage reference input. Uh, I think that's not present in the 630. Um, but yeah, it's a high performance RISC CPU, so reduced instruction set computer. It, it's got only 35 instructions to learn. That's brilliant. Uh, 20 megahertz, 35 instructions, wow. Not much else over here, nothing specific that would indicate that this would be um, ideal for you know this sort of application. So it's a generic, um, general purpose uh, pick microcontroller. Okay, so I've put this model module back together as it was before I forget where everything goes. Um, so that uh, we can put to the side and the four little screws. And let's have a look at the camera assembly because this is where a lot of the interesting stuff is happening. You can see the board is significantly busier than anything else on this uh, in this camera. So let's maybe unplug this cable and the whole assembly is held with two little screws. So let's have a look. We can have a peek at the sensor. There we go. Oh, that's a beautiful sensor. Look at this. It's got this uh, little glass covering. Maybe let me pull out my macro setup. There we go. I couldn't find my lens for macro shots, uh, but I've made another one out of scrap lenses that I had. And there we go. That's the. This is the chip, and you can see it's held nicely behind the uh, glass thing, and it's changing colors. Uh, it's probably an infrared filter that we've got over there. And let's have a look at the circuitry. So 8018SA, uh, whatever that is. Over here we've got some inductors, probably some power for the sensor. Thirteen fifty one Japan Radio Corp. Let's turn it upside down. This is most definitely some memory.
I think I forgot which way around this was going on to this. So will I be able to figure this out? Looking at this camera, uh, which has got M0 marking, whatever that is, um, it's uh, a little bit interesting what all those things are. So I suspect that this one here might be an iris, which would make sense. And there is a two wire thing for for iris uh, two wire connection. Maybe should we try to power this up? Okay, I've taken the lens cover. Well, not lens cover. The first um, arm that was actuated actuated by um, the outside knobs and um, it's a little bit more visible what's happening here I'm still not sure what this is and what this is so this is a clearly a two pin device and I can see coils of wire wound up over here so that's um, some sort of electromagnetical uh, assembly and it's the same case with this so has this got two irises okay, and I've taken those screws off to see what's happening here and oh wow okay I know what that is so oops If we can move this a little bit, oh, there we go. So, this is what changes. Oh, this is so finicky. This is what uh, when the night mode or night vision comes on and this will put out a different filter in front of the lens. So this is what I originally when I when I heard from the outside it clicks I thought this uh, the LEDs were being switched on by a relay because that's the sort of uh, sound it uh, produces but no yeah, it turns out it's the shutter in in the camera. I better stop playing with that because I will break it. Okay, I'm putting this together back now, back together now and um, I hope I've connected everything correctly and I hope I didn't put the sensor upside down but it kind of made sense this way. Um, anyways, um, I couldn't go any further with this uh, because this would potentially get destructive I mean, the only thing left was the left uh, the lens assembly, and um, the second iris here. In order to get to it, I would have to take the whole assembly apart, and I didn't want to do that because, uh, as I said, this is kind of working. So I might find a use for this. Um, anyways, as far as this video, I think that's gonna be it for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me thumbs up uh, and subscribe for more random stuff. For the time being, I guess uh, take care.